We're in what's considered to be the golden age of TV, and one of the pillars of this age is the anthology series Fargo. We're chatting to the stars about the show's third crack at the small screen. Not the Minnesota I grew up in, I tell you that. As fans dip into a whole new season of Fargo's signature oddball blend of bloody murders and Minnesota nice, this time complete with Ewan McGregor pulling double duty playing brothers, the body count is already starting to pile up. Here's part two of TK's chat with the stars of the FX anthology series, which was created by Noah Hawley and is, of course, inspired by the beloved 90s flick of the same name. Wait, it's Jerry. I don't know what to do. It's my wife. We gotta talk. How has this guy Noah Hawley done that? He's taken a movie and he's made a television series without the same story, without the same characters, and yet it feels like Fargo. So I was blown away by it. And then the whole thing of no one expected the series to be good, and it was not only good, it was great. And then the second season was great, and now this third season is even better than those two. <laughs> I feel kind of like a fangirl so far yeah. on set every day, so I'm trying to get used to being in it and not just watching it as it unfolds because it's so exciting. Exciting and surprising, Fargo is known for its twists and turns, and even the stars don't know what's coming next. Is there anything that you can share with us about how the show will play out, the storyline? No. no, no we can't. Yeah. Partly because we don't actually know. Yeah. I've only got half the script, so I don't know where it goes, really. But not knowing where his character, wait, characters, are headed definitely wasn't a deal breaker for McGregor. As he told TK, he jumped at the chance to be on Fargo, a testament to how powerful the medium has become for quality storytelling. I first committed to doing television some years ago when I remember really having a difficult time with deciding to do it because I thought, well, should I be seen to be doing television? I'm a film actor and it's a very tough decision that then. And uh, now I, it's totally different. In the space of five years, I, don't, I didn't have any of that conflict. Catch a new episode of Fargo tonight on FX. Listen to the rhythm. Don't be scared. From London to Toronto, Strictly Ballroom is dancing its way into our city today. It is, of course, a stage musical adaptation of the cult classic film from Baz Luhrmann, the first in his Red Curtain trilogy, followed by Romeo and Juliet and Moulin Rouge. TK caught up with the show's stars. It is based on the original movie, but it's kind of a reimagining in a way, right? It is. It's actually, uh, you know, there are a lot of elements from the film that, that people who know the film will enjoy. It basically it tells the story of, of Scott, who is a ballroom dancer and at, at a competition through a spontaneous turn of events, uh, starts dancing his own steps. And um, that causes quite an uproar. And then one evening when everyone he thinks everyone's gone, he's dancing on his own. And mm -hmm. Fran walks in, who is the, the cleaner of the studio. She thinks we've got to start working together to break out of that strictly ballroom mode, you know. If you fall, I will catch you, I'll be waiting time after time. It's just a lot of fun. Everyone gets up dancing at the end, everyone's walking out feeling great. You can see if it has the same effect on you. Strictly Ballroom is playing at the Princess of Wales Theatre now through June 25th. And coming up tomorrow, we're catching up with Swedish pop star Zara Larsson.